right, here we go. Holidays are over with. Everyone should have got that credit card statement by now. That being said, I hope everyone is really doing well, staying positive. It's a new year. Let's make it a good one. So with this project, we're being a little proactive due to some lateral movement on the house. A retaining wall is needed. So shout out to Brian for hitting us up to take on this project. This is a pier and gray beam system. We're going to show you guys how we go about building it from start to finish. This video is a little bit longer than normal. So grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, and watch us put this project together. I did add a lot of pictures throughout the video to give a more detailed look at what we're doing. Always, any questions, leave down below. While you're down there, hit that like button. San Francisco Bay Area, hit us up. I'm going to jump in and out of the narrative. Again, Happy New Year. Appreciate all my clients from last year that hit us up, took on their projects. Appreciate the clients that called us and we didn't get the project. And this year looks to be a pretty good year. Cal, we finally got this rain. It's been raining for the last two weeks here. So my phone has really been ringing off the hook. So we got about 10, 12 estimates set up for the month already. Pretty much got one going on in Walnut Creek, one in San Rafael, and possibly one in Narenda coming up. So again, if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, Sacramento area, hit us up. Sit back, relax. Any questions, leave down below. I'm going to jump in and out of this narrative. Let's go 2023. Let's make it a good one. So this project was about 70 feet long. We had about 16 piers. They averaged about, no, we had 12 piers. They averaged about 16 feet deep, 18 inches in diameter. Now we do have another project, the longest concrete retaining wall on YouTube. I'll leave a link down below where it goes into each step that we do to build this pier and gray beam system. Now, normally these are needed on a hillside. Um, if we can't put in a monolithic, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, gravity wall which is a footing and um, and the wall itself and we put that monolithic so we had three different pours here we had the gray beam I mean the piers then we came back did the gray beam and we did came back and did the wall here now what I'm filming here is pretty much one section here I do have another video going out kind of showing us how we put the other part together but it is 70 feet long you will see part of that throughout the video any questions any comments leave down below hit that like button we 500 subscribers away from 10,000 so definitely appreciate all you guys support all right so let's jump back into this video again hit that like button if you haven't already subscribe to the channel definitely appreciate you guys So we got 30 inches, two foot six inches. Okay. So we're six inches bigger than what they're calling for. Right. And that's gonna be better. More concrete is gonna be all blocked off. Okay. Turn us on. Should we put a whole stack of, uh, of uh, things in there? No, we gotta do one thing right here. 
We got to finish this step now. Yeah. Go to this right now. What happened? With the rotor hammer with the little tick. All right, what you see us doing here is using a two by four for a template. This is for our L's that goes into the gray bean, which we're gonna be pouring pretty soon here. So what this does, it allows this rebar to not move at all. You're gonna see us with some tie wire. We're gonna tie each one down to the two by four. So there's no movement. Normally when you pour a gray beam system or even cinder blocks, the rebar tends to move. So there's different applications to go about to making sure it moves this is pretty much bulletproof takes us a little bit of time to do but it's bulletproof we don't have to worry about coming back moving trying to adjust the rebar here we will make up any time if we did lose any time by using a rebar tying gun here it makes quick work of us tying a rebar i want to jump in here and say something about that quite sure we're going to get some uh, youtube experts here saying we should have did it this way or that or that way but that being said, you do whatever makes your client happy and whatever you're comfortable doing it with. So let's jump back into the video. Definitely appreciate you guys. Any questions, any comments, you know, leave those down below. Hit that like button. Let's go. So here we are, we're about to pour this concrete gray bean. You guys can kind of see the cage here. Let me see. I forgot my microphone, so you probably can't hear me that well. We got 12 piers here. They go down about, um, average about 16 feet, 18 inches in diameter. We got number six rebar here. This is four inches on center. We got one in the front that's gonna be a number four that's 12 inches on center. Everything else, all the horizontals will be 12 inches on center, number four. It's about 70 feet long, two and a half feet wide, and uh, 24 inches thick, which is kind of typical. Now, this one's supposed to be 24 inches thick, 24 inches wide, but we made it a little wider so we can get our, our stakes in here. So this little extra six inches, three to six inches, it's gonna be concrete, but we're gonna leave this, some of these stakes in, but it's not part of the actual structure of the uh, of the gray beam. But all this is in bare rock. So everything was up to about this level right here. And we once we poured the piers, we had to come back and dig all that out by hand. So the guys dug all this out by hand into bare rock. But it only took two and a half days, so they really kicked ass on this. This part was a little bit easier. I know we probably got the uh, OSHA patrol out here, but this is the only part that probably technically needed shoring. But 70 feet long, probably about a good eight feet probably needed shoring, but we made quick work of it. And sometimes when you're doing jobs, you know, these are 
residential, so we can't give a change order for eight feet of shoring. But yeah, so we're about to get going on this. Concrete should be coming pretty soon. We got the rebar caps on there. A lot of people was talking about put rebar caps on there. We just kept forgetting them, so we got them on there pretty much. Again, this is two and a half feet wide, 24 inches thick. We got 12 piers in there. They average about, uh, about 16 and a half feet, 18 inches in diameter. We got number six rebar, four inches on center for the L's. It's a double mat system, and we got number four, 12 inches on center. Then everything else, again, is gonna be uh, 12 inches on center, number four. So that'll be part of the next video. So this video I'm working on is gonna be us pouring the pairs and setting up the gray beam. And I'm gonna get the drone up so you guys can kinda see it uh, as we pour it. Pretty straightforward when we pour it, but the drone will give you a better shot of what we got going on. All right, catch you guys on the next one. Appreciate you guys. Sacramento, San Francisco Bay Area, hit us up. You need some work. Everyone else, appreciate you watching. Hope you learned something. Let's get it. All right, so it's time for us to build the back of the wall, well actually the wall itself. And we use two by 12s, muscle memory. We get a lot of questions about why we use two by 12s, pretty much muscle memory. All our stakes are four to five feet on center. Once we get that first two by 12 down, it's just a matter of stacking these boards pretty much like Legos. You can see us here installing the rebar. This is where we make up any time if some was lost. All these are number four, vertical and horizontal for uh, our double mat rebar here you can see us how we kind of reinforce the uh the uh corner here and you guys want some more information on that leave a comment down below again we're going to do the front just like we did the back all the stakes are four to five feet on center um then we use to kind of hold it down onto the gray beam here we use this rotor hammer and some scrap two by fours and we just kind of drill in as you guys can see here use a 16 nail with some tie wire and that pretty much holds it in place i know it's a lot of tricks for this but this is kind of how we do it our model is not about seeing it our model is about being doing shit right <laughs> Again, you want to stick around to the end of this video. We got a lot of before and after pictures of it, and it also helps out our algorithm. So hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't. Let's get back into the video. Let's go. so it's time for us to pour the wall it's about 15 yards i believe it's advertised is about six and a half feet tall when building these retaining walls you just want to make sure you have adequate support so this drone shot kind of shows you everything put together with the kickers with the stakes and so forth we use wt10 simpsons tie wt10 to hold the wall together and the 10 stands for 10 inches thick 
ideally we use wt8s but i think it goes down to wt4s uh with those simpson ties all the way up to wt18 i believe so it's not much to see here we're going to be stripping the wall pretty soon you'll be able to see the wall here we got some before and after pictures so you definitely want to stick around and if you're looking to get a structural retaining wall done in the bay area or the sacramento area hit us up all our information is below got plenty of videos and content coming out so definitely appreciate you guys again happy new year let's make it a good year it's cool to ask for help check out the rest of this video we definitely got some before and after pictures from the drone shot um, that'll give you guys an idea on what this retaining wall looks like again this is a pier and grade beam system here and we also got a bunch of gravity walls you can see i'll leave the links down below check out the longest concrete retaining wall on youtube it goes through the same process but i break it down each step it's about 15 videos for that so you can get your netflix on with that Appreciate you guys. It's cool to ask for help. Let's make it a good year.